The ActiveOS Designer is an intuitive Eclipse IDE that allows a developer to create an executable process that can interface with web services, JMS, REST, plain old Java objects, and even include human workflow. In the top-down modeling vignette, you saw how to use ActiveVos Designer to create a new process model from scratch. Using the top-down approach, we can define the basic control flow and activities within a process. The next step, which we'll take a closer look at here, is to begin to drill down into the service definitions and messages that each of the activities within the process will implement. I'll open a process that we've already put together at a high level. This process is similar to the one we use for classic cars. As you can see, the diagram is pretty much complete, but there are error markers indicating that we still need to provide implementation details. This request for a quote process begins when a potential customer requests work to be done on their car. A request message is received by the process, and an acknowledgement message is returned. The next two activities execute in parallel. A chief estimator reviews the request and prepares an estimate for how much it will cost to complete the job. Meanwhile, a partner service is executed that does a credit check on the customer. The partner service returns a risk level of high, low, or review. The estimate amount and credit risk are passed to this activity, which will execute a plain old Java object, or POJO. The POJO contains some business logic that will determine how much the customer is eligible to finance. The final step is to automatically generate and send an email to the customer. As a developer, the first thing I might want to do is import any available WSDL files that describe the services that the process will be interfacing with. I would also import any existing XML sample messages and or schema files that describe the input and output messages of the services. Resources that my company or department or project team has ownership of can be imported directly into the project. For now, I'll just import a couple schema files. One defines the input and output messages for the RFQ process itself. The other describes the input and output messages for the estimation task. Service definitions that are external to my company or department can be imported using service references. So, for instance, if I'm going to access a partner service, I can import the WSDL that defines the service from here. The advantage of using service references is that the original location of the import is recorded. So, anytime during development, we can compare or replace our local copy with the latest version at the original import site. The participants view allows us to view each of the different participants or actors within the process, as well as the services or tasks that they perform. The view contains three categories of participants. The process itself is a participant. It typically does things like receives request messages and replies with a response. This type of participant will be defined as a process service consumer. Partner service providers carry out the work of most of the activities within a process. They define the underlying services that are invoked. And, as the name implies, human task participants represent human-facing activities that are performed by a person in a certain role or group. Let's take a look at how all of this comes together. The first activity in the process is a receive activity. The process starts by receiving a request for quote message from the outside world. The participant or role that handles the receive and reply activities is the process itself. So let's create a new participant. I'll give the participant a name. And I'll let ActiveVos generate the interface automatically based on schema that describes the input and output messages.
Now I'll just select the operation for the receive activity. The incoming message will need to be saved as a process variable, so it's available for other activities within the process. I'll let designer create a new variable for me automatically. As you can see, the participants view is beginning to expand as participants and service interfaces are added to the process. The reply activity is also performed by the process, so I can easily add the implementation details for that also. First, the participant and the operation. Next, I need to format the data that will be returned by the process. I can define the content of the message by copying an existing message, or I can use XPath expressions or XQuery to build the message. If I choose XQuery, a sample message is generated with tokens that I can replace with a literal or define how the token will be replaced with runtime data. So, for instance, to map the process ID to the reference number element, I can just highlight the token and use a built-in function to get the process ID. I can replace tokens with variable data by simply selecting the element from the tree. I know this mapping doesn't really make sense, but you get the idea. To map a literal, I can just replace the token completely. ActiveVos uses WS Beeple extension for people and WS Human Task to define human interaction within a process. Defining a human participant is not much different than what we just did for defining details around the receive and reply activity. I start by defining the activity as either a task or a notification. Rename it. Then, generate the WSDL for the task based on the schema we imported earlier that defines the input and output messages for the task. We've already seen how to assign message data. In this case, we would map the input data for the task like we did for the reply activity using XPath or XQuery. And I'd assign a new variable for the task output. In the classic cars demo, a person in the role of chief estimator is responsible for carrying out the estimation task. So I'll define the chief estimator as a new participant. Now we can assign that role as a potential owner for the task. We can create other roles as well for the task administrator or even identify groups that should never be able to work on a particular task. Task presentation can be defined here. The subject, for instance, 
is what the user would see as the subject line in their task inbox. The way the task detail is displayed to the user is defined here. In version 7.0, we have the option of creating custom forms used by ActiveVoss Central, generate XSL style sheets that can be customized for use with ActiveVoss inbox application, or you can create your own custom task rendering. Deadlines and notifications can also be added, which might result in something as simple as a notification or an email being sent, but a deadline could also result in reassignment of the task to another person or even a custom process being invoked. Let's take a look at how we would invoke the partner service, which we imported WSDL for earlier. This is a web service that's running in the cloud, but we imported a copy of the WSDL in service references. To invoke the partner service, I'll just create a new partner service provider and select the interface that it uses. Assign the operation. Map the input data used to call the service. And capture the response message as a new local variable as we've already seen. To light up the POJO, I'll start by importing it into my project. Now that the Java interface is imported, I'll just create another new partner service provider. Instead of generating the WSDL from a schema, I'll generate it directly from the POJO. I'll select the WSDL service definition that was just created. And now it's just a matter of selecting the operation, mapping the input data for the POJO call, and creating another new process variable for the result. The final activity is an email activity. And this service is built into the ActiveVoss engine. So again, I'll create another new partner service provider.
but this time I'll just pick the service definition directly from the system services drop down. Of course, I'd still need to map the data that the email service is going to return, uh, but we've already seen how to do that. So this gives you an idea of the steps involved in defining the implementation details for a process orchestration. In the next vignette, we'll test and then deploy the process to the ActiveVos server. Thank you.